I was selling some of my shoes on Craigslist a year ago just to pocket some extra cash. I wanted to move out of my old apartment in a few months and was hoping to get some money to help pay for movers. The shoes were nothing special, but I listed them for generous prices, hoping to get them bought quickly. I guess Craigslist wasn't the best place for shoes though because it took a whole week before I got a single offer. It was some guy whose email had the name John K in it, and he offered just $5 less than my listing price. It seemed like an unnecessary adjustment to the original price, but I didn't want to keep waiting for more offers, so I wrote him back saying I was okay with that. We set up to meet the following day at 5 o'clock in the parking lot of a public gas station in the middle of town. The next day, I sent a text, and he confirmed that he was on his way, so I left as well and got to the gas station right at 5 o'clock. They weren't there yet, but there was a lot of traffic on the roads, so I figured he'd be late. I sat in my car patiently, and over the course of 30 minutes, the road cleared up and the sun started coming down. And then John finally pulled in. He drove a small sedan with none of the headlights working and resembling something from a scrapyard. He parked next to me and got out. John looked like he was in his 30s and was a pretty large guy, wearing ripped up clothes and having long unkempt hair. He didn't say much, so I brought out the shoes and let him look at them. As he held them though and didn't say anything, he kept looking back at the gas station. I don't know what he was looking at, but after he checked over his shoulder multiple times, I glanced over as well. The gas station was empty aside from one guy putting gas in his car, but otherwise, I didn't know what he could be looking at. John was taking his time though, pointlessly looking over everything multiple times, as if they were some really rare shoes that he was going to drop hundreds on, but these were just some regular sneakers, nothing fancy or rare. Then John looked over his shoulder one more time, just as the car by the pump started to drive away, and all of a sudden, his whole demeanor changed. He stopped looking at the shoes and looked at me. What else do you have? he asked. I looked at him confused. Those are the only shoes I brought. I didn't know you were interested in others. His eyes went cold as he stepped past me and put his hand on my car door, trying to open it. It was locked, and John immediately looked at me and told me to unlock it. His voice was deep and strict, like it was a threat if I didn't. I kind of just stared at him and tried to wrap my head around this, thinking of what the best course of action would be, but in the moment, there's just no time to really think through options. I unlocked the door, knowing I at most all he could take was a couple of random bills I had in the front. But then he said something that I was not expecting at all. Get in, he ordered. He opened the passenger door and told me again. I stood there, even more taken aback, but now starting to get way more worried about where this was going. I looked behind me, hoping someone else was here, but the gas station was empty, no people or cars anywhere in sight. John grabbed my arm and pulled me over to the door, taking the keys from me and aggressively shoving me into the car while throwing a few punches, landing on the right side of my face. I immediately tried to get up, but John slammed the door against my head, making my vision go blurry and everything just sort of fading in and out. I heard him start walking around the car as if he was going to the driver's side, but then he suddenly turned around and sprinted back to his truck. I was still out of it and barely remember anything else, but I guess someone pulled in at the perfect time and confronted John, scaring him away. If they hadn't helped me and John was able to get in and presumably drive away, I don't know what would have happened. Assuming his car was either stolen or untraceable to his name, then stealing my car and abducting me would have left no trace of our interaction, giving him days if not weeks to do whatever it was he planned before anyone would even come looking. It was around this time last year when I decided to use Craigslist as a means to sell a few things I had to get rid of. My house was getting cluttered and I planned to get some new furniture. With winter right around the corner, I wanted to get these things out fast. The main piece I was selling were these two lounge chairs in my living room. They were really big and a bit outdated, but still fully functional and didn't have any stains or rips on them. It only took about half a day for a few responses to come in, but two of the three gave me lowball offers, so there was really only one guy who was serious about buying them. He wanted to take a look at them after work that day, sometime around 6 o'clock or 6.30. I of course agreed, just happy to get them out quickly. Now usually, I'd try to meet up somewhere public, but honestly, 
I didn't have a way to transport the chairs, and even if I did, I don't think I could lift them myself anyway. So I sent in my address. Come six o'clock, I turned on the front porch light and opened up the curtains on the windows, then sat in the living room on my phone while I waited for them to show up. Probably twenty minutes passed before a truck pulled into my driveway. They took a few minutes before getting out and walking up to the door. I said hi and let him in. He was an average-looking man, late twenties or early thirties, wearing typical work clothes. His name was Matt, and he started up some small talk, telling me about why he was excited about getting the chairs and everything. The guy seemed really nice and I felt relieved that this would be quick and easy. He walked around the chair and sat in it and seemed to enjoy it. We talked about price and he was good to give me what I listed it for. But just as we were about to exchange cash, we both heard a car door slam shut. It sounded like it was right in the driveway where he parked his truck. Matt quickly went outside to check on it, and I just watched, not really sure what was going on. I looked through the window, and there were no other cars out there, so someone had to have been messing with his truck. A minute later, Matt came in clearly angry and said someone stole a bunch of stuff out of his car. I could tell that he was not so trusting of me, like he thought I had something to do with it. I obviously didn't and I said that, but he was right to be skeptical and I was also right to be skeptical of him. I still didn't know if this was some kind of setup. But before anything could be worked out, we heard footsteps quickly approaching the front door. We turned and looked over, seeing a guy in a hood push the door open and step inside my house. His eyes were bloodshot and he looked nothing short of insane. His right hand was shoved in his pocket with the outline of a very recognizable object. He stared at us, standing just a few feet away, looking like he was in a complete state of rage. The guy was young though, only a kid, maybe 18 or 19 years old, but still dangerous nonetheless. Both Matt and I stood still, trying to not provoke anything to happen. But then Matt started telling the kid to take it easy. He held his hands up and took a step closer, but the kid was quick to pull the weapon out of his pocket and aim it right at him. Yes, it could have been fake, but there wasn't no way to tell, and from the way the kid was acting, I really don't think it was. He yelled at Matt to walk out the door, and now in shock, he did as he said. The kid then followed him out of the house and held him at gunpoint the whole way to the truck, where he had Matt get in the driver's seat, and then the kid got in the back. I watched in terror as he pulled out and drove away, obviously outside of Matt's will. As soon as they were gone, I called 911, then ran to my car and tried to follow them while describing what was going on to the operator. But they were gone. I couldn't find any sign of them. Police ran an investigation using the information I had to quickly identify who Matt was and his truck's license plate. Over the next couple of days, I was just waiting for a call, but that call never came. Both Matt and his truck still have never turned up. I feel guilty like I should have done more, but everything was so risky and I likely could have lost my life as well. And even in those final moments of the interaction, I didn't know for sure if Matt was in on it as some sort of elaborate plan. I don't know what that kid wanted or why any of it happened. It's been almost a full year though, and I don't think it's likely that anything more will be known. I use a lot of sites like Craigslist for the same reasons everyone else does. You can find expensive things for really discounted prices or even just cheap things for even cheaper. I don't have a ton of money and using these sites are sometimes essential when it comes to getting things like furniture that's usually really expensive to buy anywhere else. This happened when I was looking around for a dining room table. Ours was really old, and my whole family used it as a place to eat and as a workspace, so it's been through a lot over the years. I went around on Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp, but neither had anything good. Most of them were still expensive, and even when I tried to bargain with a few of the sellers, none of them would budge. So then I went to Craigslist. Around here, I think most people use other sites nowadays, but Craigslist still always had the cheapest deals, though they were still somewhat rare to find. But almost as soon as I opened up the site and hit enter on the search bar, a really good listing showed up. It was a very basic wooden dining table that didn't have much wear on it, and the seller posted it for only a hundred bucks compared to the $400 to $500 everyone else was listing things for. This was a steal. 
I sent a message saying I'd love to check it out and would be willing to pay the full price. He didn't reply immediately, so I just took a break and hung out with my kids until around 7 o'clock when they went to their rooms to get ready for bed. I went back to my laptop and found a response from just a couple of minutes ago. It was a very quick few sentences saying he was sorry, but the table was going to be thrown out tomorrow morning. But if I really wanted it, I'd have to come by tonight or any time before 5 o'clock a.m. tomorrow. It was weird that he'd be willing to sell it at any time during the night, and his reasoning didn't make all that much sense to me. But after some thought, I replied back saying I could pick it up right now. I didn't want to go there really late into the night or super early in the morning, but it was only 7 o'clock, so I didn't see a problem if I was able to go right now. The man replied quickly, agreeing and sending the address. It was only 10 minutes from my place, so I let my wife know what was going on and where I'd be then headed out. From context clues, you probably already know that I don't live in a lavish area. So when I say the seller's house was really worn down, I mean it was really worn down. It was small like the others in our area, but the yard was full of trash and random other things, surrounded by a thin chain link fence. I parked on the side and opened the fence, walking through the yard and up to the door, which was already open. I could hear some people talking and laughing. I peeked inside and gave a light knock on the door. Right away, a man came around the corner and invited me in. He looked like he was in late college, somewhere in his mid-twenties. As I stepped inside though, I couldn't help but notice how disgusting the whole place was. There were beer cans laying around and stains on the carpet. It looked like a really poorly taken care of house where they had probably hosted hundreds of college parties. The man was very laid back though, casually walking me down the hallway and into the kitchen while talking about how he didn't have room for the table anymore. When we got to the kitchen, there were two other men looking about the same age and standing against the wall, seemingly in the middle of a conversation. Next to them was the table. Somehow, it looked almost untouched. I didn't know how that was possible considering the rest of the house. I walked around it and checked to see if it was stable and whatnot, but as I did, the house suddenly went quiet. The two talking had stopped, and the man selling the table didn't speak either. I looked up, seeing them all staring at me. Did I do something? I asked, looking around at each of them. When my eyes fell on one of the men closest to me though, I noticed that his pupils were massive, something that only being drugged up could achieve. But what he was on, I didn't know. Regardless, in that moment, I knew this wasn't right. Not only was this getting strange, but I didn't want to buy a table that's been in this kind of house and used by these sorts of people. Um, I think I'm going to pass on it. Thank you though, I said softly. I started walking toward the hallway, but one of them stepped in front of me. He didn't say anything, he just stood there, blocking the way out. Something about the way they were all looking and acting, I could tell that whatever this was, it was planned out, and they likely never meant to sell the table. My face fell with fear as the anticipation of just standing there surrounded by these strangers began to overwhelm me. But then one of them stepped over and whispered something in the other's ear, and they moved aside, still not saying anything. I cautiously walked between them, hurrying down the hallway and out the door. A lot of things went through my head on the drive home. I knew that they were planning something horrible, but what that was and why they ended up letting me go, I'm not so sure of. When I got home, I told my wife, who convinced me to call the police and report it, but they couldn't do anything without anything having happened. So whatever those men were planning, I'll probably never know. I just hope someone else doesn't have to find out.